there is dead silence now. We need some music. Good, good evening. Uh, something profound. Well, then I'll have to have you here. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to welcome you all on behalf of Kiran Malhotra, who is our executive director, who runs this organization with a very small staff of few people you met outside, Patricia and, and uh, volunteers. So we're really excited to have you over here today. Uh, how many of you are um, here for the first time? Let me see some hands. Great. So um, I would really encourage that you all should become members of Thai so you can keep uh, continue to attend these kind of very inspirational programs as well as many other programs. So you should check it out on our website, thaisv.org. Um, so before we get started with the program, um, I would like to, uh, for all those who are here for the first time, I would like to tell you a little bit about Thai organization. So Thai, the Indus Entrepreneur, uh, was founded in 1992 by a group of highly accomplished professionals um, who wanted to uh, give uh, something back to the society. Um, and so, uh, hence the name, the Indus Entrepreneur, also signifies the origin of um, the founders um, uh, from South Asia as well as Indus region. However, today the name implies it's uh, talent, ideas, and enterprise. And uh, Thai is a very open and inclusive organization. And like I said earlier, for one dollar a day, you can become a member. It's a very cheap uh, investment. And uh, I would really encourage you to do that. And the uh, Thai, since its founding in 1992, has grown to over 57 chapters um, in 14 countries, all the way from Asia, uh, Australia, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, in India, India and Pakistan, number of cities in North America, uh, Canada and um, Canada and United States, as well as in Europe, all the way in Sweden. Uh, so, which is all again? This is one of the, I guess, only organization I know which is led very heavily by volunteers, almost probably more than 90, you know, 95 percent or so. Um, so, which is really a great accomplishment, and Thai seeks to um, uh, cultivate and nurture the ecosystem of entrepreneurship and free economies, as we believe that this is one of the single most instrument for creating prosperity. Now, Thai have four, uh, four constituencies. We have charter members who are um, invited on, on based on their accomplishments and who are at the stage in their life or any time to give back to the entrepreneurial community. We have a number of them in the audience. Uh, can I see some hands, please? I see Deepak, uh, Vis, Vis is our president, and then we have our president-elect, I saw. Where is Venk? Venk is our new president-elect, so this year, um, uh, so congratulations to Venk. He'll be spearheading the organization going forward from next year when Vis uh, relinquishes his uh, chief volunteer duties here which are not paid by the way, we are all volunteers. So, and so then me, chart. I just want to point one thing out right now since you just mentioned. By the way, I did not know that the, the new president elect authorized you to raise a rate. It is not dollar a day, it's only 30 cents a day. So oh, 30 cents a day, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> That's why I was wondering, no one has yeah. done over here already, okay? Yeah, I know. So I was wondering. Two dollars a week or 30 cents a day, guys. So please don't be scared, those of you who are brand new. Yeah, yeah okay? I'm sorry. Because I was thinking why everyone was silent, dollar a day. I said, wow, 360 bucks. Okay, sorry, it's 30 cents a day. That's really cheap. That's even. <laughs> so, so I would really encourage you to do that. So, charter members, and the second constituency is our members, which is, like I said, 30 cents a day. You might get some discount if you call this. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then we have our sponsors, uh, third, which in fact I see Stan right there from Morgan Stanley. So we have uh, sponsors like corporate, uh, Stan, could you please? Uh, so um, Stan is a senior vice president in Morgan Stanley. And uh, we have a number of other corporations like SAP, IBM, and uh, venture capital firms, legal firms. <laughs> and consulting advisory firms who help us uh, support financially. So what um, uh, what we do is have a number of programs. Our flagship event is uh, TICON, uh, which is held in May. I believe it's on 18th and 19th of May this year. So how many of you have been to a TICON here? Great. And do you know, I'm going to take a quiz now. <laughs> We're in Silicon Valley, and you know, I got a quiz. These days, in order to get a job, it seems you have to go write some programs. So. So, so um, how many, uh, do you know when the first icon was held? 
94, okay. And so how many of you have been to every Tycon? I think I know a couple of people probably have. Has anyone been to every Tycon? Okay, so we have this, myself. So we have at least, three is a good number. <laughs> and I'm sure Venk or, Venk, have you been to every Tycon? No. Oh, okay, all right, I won't comment. <laughs> So Tycon is a great event, and guess what? The, the just a couple of months ago, Worth Magazine voted Tycon to be one of the top ten conferences in the world for ideas and entrepreneurship, along with a World Economic Forum. I'm sure you hear a lot about being held in, in Davos every year, and TED. So, which is really a great accomplishment, and we're really proud of that. And of course, thanks and uh, congratulations to all the volunteers. You know, everyone since uh, the founding of Thai who've been working, because every Thaicon is organized by almost about 500 plus volunteers. Start from January, and any of you who's interested in volunteering, please, uh, you know, contact me, contact Patricia, contact Viz, Vank, anyone. So we'd love to have you. From January onwards, we'll start preparing for organizing it in May. And it's really a great event, and if you haven't been, if you can volunteer, make sure you attend. It's really a it will be a great experience for you. It's a two-day event. And then the, then we have a number of programs which are industry sectors. So like, like we have social media, cloud, life sciences, and energy, and then we have women forum. And so a number of them, they're led by uh, two chairs. We call them co-chairs. They are like industry experts, very highly accomplished people. So you can check out on our website again, tisv.org. Um, and then the, another couple of new programs we launched in last uh, couple of years. Like what we do is every year, by the way, I forgot to mention, I'm also chair for programs. So what we do is we try to launch programs which will continue to foster entrepreneurship. That's the mission of Thai, and so globally. So uh, the, number one, one of the programs we launched last year in August, in fact, chaired by Venk and a number of steering committee members, including we have uh, Deepak, one of them, Vish, anyone else, I think and myself, I'm also part of that. So we launched this last year in August. In fact, today, we were uh, just mentioned in New York Times blog about the Thai, Thai Angels, so you can check it out on online. If you just say Thai Angels in New York Times, you can check it out, and if you want the link, I would be happy to send it to you. So we have funded, on an average, one company per month since last August. Um, so usually it's a simple process, go to our website, three-step process, you apply there. If you or if any of your friends are looking for seed money, up to you know, half to one million dollars, you can apply there, it goes through a screening process, then um, you know, three companies who are invited in front of um, you know, anywhere from 50 to 80, 90 angel investors who come here on every um, third Monday of the month, except in May and December. May because we have Tycon, December is holidays. So please make sure, uh, so that's uh, really one of, the, uh, one of the new programs we launched. Second program we launched was My Story, which you'll hear, so I won't mention about it. Third one we also launched recently was in August, was Thai Startup Pitch Fest, which is, uh, we have the last one this Thursday. So if you have any of your friends again who want to come and practice in front of three or four venture capitalists, who will be here in the panel. Um, elevated pitch of two minutes and uh, one of them who is selected will be uh, right away screened for Thai Angels meeting in January so they can go in front of them and they could get funded. So that's a, a program. So we will continue to bring out new programs as we uh, go into 2012. So and if you have any other ideas or feedback please feel free to uh, you know contact me or any of the Thai uh, uh, folks over here. So now um, so with, with basically what I would like to do is now, um, that's enough, any other questions or anything, please feel free to contact us later on. And with that, what I would like to do is um, um, to introduce our amazing entrepreneur today, who I have known and been friends with since our college days, long time actually. So uh, I'm really, really, it's a, it's a great honor to have him here and share his amazing and entrepreneurial story. But uh, the way I'd like to introduce is I'd like to show you a two minute video clip.
Okay, that's enough. So, as you can see, um, entrepreneurship is about, uh, okay, sorry. Entrepreneurship, as you all know, is about um, creating freedom for yourself. It's freedom to push your, freedom to go work on your ideas, freedom to push the boundaries, as you heard. So, I was talking to Vikram a couple of weeks ago. I said, Vikram, how do you want me to uh, tell about yourself because I know him long enough I can tell a lot of stories which so I would you know withhold so so he says so he said it's all about speed and so speed that's so I came across this nitro it's a uh, you know it's an amateur um, group out of France and you know it's kind of gets me going when I go to the cardio so I thought oh, here is a nice one so speed basically Vikram loves motorbike and that hills actually it could be Vikram because he lives up in the Los Gatos hills somewhere so he uh, you know, he has a motorbike, that's one. Second thing is, and whatever he has done, I've known, since I've known him, if he puts his mind into it, he's very intense. And so, like, when he was working at Sun, it was like improving the performance of operating systems. And then he worked at Oracle, then again, it's improving the performance of the databases, and then when he founded IO Turbine, so it was improving the performance of all these input-output bottlenecks in the virtualized environment. So with that, what I would like to invite Vikram to share his amazing, colorful, and uh, exciting journey over here. So let's give him a big round of applause. guys, how's everyone doing? All right, good stuff, good stuff. Dan, you got the whole video thing set up on me, you got the, yeah, awesome. You guys are all very cool, thank you, thank you. And great intro. Yeah, I love motors, motorcycles, yeah, I love motorsports, I love speed, I love uh, Lamborghinis, I love Bugattis, I love Maseratis. Could never afford them. <laughs> Why do you do startups, right? Um, it's all about the speed, it's about the acceleration, it's about the thrill, it's about the fun. So, um, I'm posing. <laughs> do it, do it. I'm sorry, I'm so totally unprepared. There's, there's no, oh, hey guys, sorry, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if you can get your money's worth. Hopefully the food was good. <laughs> there's no money back guarantee. How much did you guys pay? 70 bucks? <laughs> okay, good. So my story is really about our story. It's about teams. It's about spirit. It's about adventure. It's about what it takes to really be an entrepreneur, right? So let's, let's talk about it. You know, how, how do you make a million bucks? How do you make a million, 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 million bucks? How do you make successful, you know, highly successful company? How do you do what you under you know undertake and you set your eyes on and, and and whatever you know you guys are here sitting here out for some of you are venture capitalists some of you are entrepreneurs and some of you are wannabe all that is fine I used to be there so so I'm just going to move forward here and say that this is the story of this is not my story I want to talk about it through a very photo essay there's not a single bullet there's not a single uh, you know, you're not going to suffer through a slideshow here. It's a photo essay of not just my life, it's a story that I want to tell through the people I've been uh, working through. Uh, that's the reason why I call this a team and adventure sport. So let's just move forward with this. 
This is my family. Uh, my most beautiful wife and daughter. Uh, incredible, incredible people. Uh, you need the family element behind you. Without, hey, where's Mino? Stop shooting that thing. I can keep that thing down. What about you? David, kick out underneath the table. So, uh, my daughter is in college. Uh, you, need, you need steely people. You need people made of titanium and steel behind you who can suffer through the doldrums of life uh, to make things possible. So if you don't have it, I'm sorry, but I think, I think you need to believe in yourself and your family needs to believe in you. So thank you for being there for me. <laughs> you need a That's Dusty and that's Rama. Move forward here. I do climb. Uh, Adventure is all about being out there. Uh, it's literally about trying to engage the unknown, um, taking some breaths, and trying to feel, uh, you know, it's about really testing yourself. Uh, this is this is El Cap, this is Yosemite. Uh, 25 years ago when I went to Yosemite Valley, I looked at walls of granite, and there's 2,000 to 3,000 foot cliffs out there, and I knew I wanted to climb. You know, some of us would have wanted to laugh at me, but I set my eyes on something. I, I, I don't think I uh, get infatuated with things. I, I fall in love, and I know exactly what I'm in love with. So many years later, I think I've climbed a lot of rock in Yosemite, and I'm going to use a lot of analogies from climbing in this conversation here today. It's the same view. Same rock, taken sideways. It's pretty vertical for those of you who have been in the valley. You see this guy out here? That's not me, but that's how it feels. <laughs> if someone took a snapshot of us out there on that rock. Good stuff. That's Kevin. Kevin, hey Kevin, where the hell are you? Kevin didn't make it here to this conversation. His daughter is sick. Kevin's my climbing buddy. Talk about team and adventure sports. Talk about entrepreneurship. Kevin's with uh, Fusion IO, the company, you know, IO Turbine that got I, you know, bought by Fusion IO. Uh, he's been on the other end of the rope with me. We trust each other with our lives. Um, we're going to get into a lot of this whole team spirit and what it takes to build us, you know, the trust and have the spirit to build companies. Companies or success, all of that is uh, determined by the people you work with. Uh, yeah. Recognize that we don't have a peak bagger look. It does feel good to be on top of a hill. It does feel good to be on top of the rock. That's what it's all about. Uh, you've got to pick your barrels carefully, and then it's great to be able to make it on top. You know, startups are actually much bloodier than climbing. So just thought that uh, as a metaphor, this would serve us whatever the imagery is worth. Uh, before I get into too much of the team stuff, I want to spend a few minutes talking about mentoring. Uh, I think uh, entrepreneurship begins with teams. I think I have hit Sandal pretty damn hard. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying I, there's not a VC I don't know, but I think most, I, I you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of investors and we feel that I've hit very damn hard, and I think they're a part of the ecosystem. There's a lot of Q&A we're going to do. This is a photo blog, um, I, and, and we're going to just suffer through this really quick, and then we'll do the Q&A, and just hit me very hard on that stuff, and I'll, I'll be happy to respond to your questions. By the way, uh, there's still drinks out there. If you guys want to reach out and stuff. I'm drinking. I don't care what you guys think. Sorry, that was not meant to be funny. So. Uh, Mentoring. Let's talk about mentoring. You can't build a team without believing in the people that are a part of your team. Seriously. Deepak, I am not sure if you agree with me. I used to work for Deepak, by the way. Years ago, it sucked. Long story. No, no, no. So, uh, uh, Let's get back to brass tags here. <laughs> Mentoring is the ability to spot talent, is the ability to say, 
you the man, Naveen. I want to work with you. I love you, man. I'm so passionate about this thing. We got to make this thing happen. You see that fire in you? I think, I think that's what's going to make you highly, highly successful. I used to take a class here. This is middle school girls with my daughter, the girls' middle school, getting kids up, getting teams of kids up on rocks. This is up at Castle Rock. I love climbing, as you know. You, you're going to use a lot of analogies from climbing. Sometimes you have to get their moms up too. Uh, let's talk about team spirit here for a little while. My daughter, Anika. So when I was taking the climbing class uh, for the girls in our class, uh, Anika was uh, decided, you know, hey dad, you know, I really want to do, uh, sorry, this is, all, this is supposed to be my story, right? This is supposed to be her story, the people, the story of my ecosystem. So Anika tells me, I, I, you know, I, I love climbing. She's a great climber. Uh, I, I want to do jewelry class. I said, Todd, you know, you're such a good climber. You've got to be climbing with us. But she did the jewelry class. And then it was a whole week in the session at the girls' middle school in Mount Mio. It's a private school. And on a Friday, you go Monday to Friday, and then Anika comes to me and says, you know, obviously, all the kids had great fun. You heard all these kids climb up with me up to the top. They're, 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 they're running up to the top. You know, we, we're on the same roof. They're learning a lot of great skills. Friday, Anika tells me, you know, I had a great jewelry class, and I knew she did. But she said, can I check out what these kids did? This is 3 o'clock on a Friday when the whole intercession is over. I said, okay, fine. Let's go to Castle Rock. Check it out. So she goes, so, so what, what, did you, what do you guys all do? What, what did you climb? So we get on this, this, this rock here, they see a crash pad out there. That's not an easy climb to get on to. So she hauls her, sorry to say, sorry Anika, hauls her ass up. And not just that, she climbs every freaking rock that I climbed with all the kids through the year, to, I mean through the whole week. And I think that's spirit. And that's my goal. And that's what I'm looking for when I'm looking at entrepreneurs. I'm looking at you who has the flame, who has the fire, who has the spirit, who says, I got my freaking eyes set up on that thing, and I want to get up, get up to the top. And I think that's what it takes. So I just wanted to use a little thing. This is not a dad-daughter thing. I've been mean, not much of a dad here. But just wanted to get that across. You probably want to know how it all started, what my past lives are, and stuff like that. You know, I grew up thinking I'll be a sailor. It didn't last very long. <laughs> Sorry, I grew up with visions of, uh, oh, I want to be a sailor, I want to be out there with the Marines, with the Navy and stuff like that back in India. And then uh, I came across, uh, this is my friend Joe, Joe Elliott, a uh, great guy, a tough man. Uh, uh, I'll have to tell you about my first big failure, which is the first startup that I did. Uh, uh, you all want to know about both the successes and the, successes and the failures out here. Uh, so, uh, after my first startup, uh, I was going to take some time off and I met with Joe and uh, Joe wanted to teach me sailing. This is San Francisco in the background, there's a bay bridge out there, you see out on the left out here, that's, uh, that's, the, candlelight, uh, that's the candlestick park out there and, and you'll hear more about that much later, we'll talk about that. So, talk about mentoring a little bit. As much as I love to mentor and make sure that my team is on board with what my vision is and where I want to take them, Joe was a mentor to me. Joe, by the way, is an extremely successful entrepreneur, probably sailing out there as a seven seas somewhere. He sailed around the world. And uh, we were to uh, actually sail at least halfway around the world after my first bloody startup, which died, which completely crashed. And the training was this trip here, uh, of which I have a picture here. And it all, we spent about a week, most of it in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, I'm not sure what the carryover value here is, but it's about the team spirit, it's about the adventure, it's about the bond. Uh, I don't know how much of you know that if you want to sail around the world, I would like to echo what Joe told me. 
if you are in front of the Golden Gate Bridge, you have, uh, it's like a wind tunnel. It's 32 knot winds. On a beautiful day like this, maybe blue sky, maybe a little cloudy out there, and you're out there, and you got a 42 foot sailboat out there. I really want to be a sailor, and I'm planning, and I'm training here to be sailing with you around the world, right? What does it take? Uh, you have uh, the Girardelli Square, you have Sausalito, you have the Alcatraz out there, and huge freaking crazy winds out there. The waters are angry, right? I mean, if you fall off the boat, uh, there's gonna be people out there licking on their ice cream out at Girardelli Square while you just die out there, right? Literally. And, and then, no seriously, I mean, this is not a joke out there. And, and then, so the way Joe trains you is, you head into the bridge. You're looking out from the bay out there, and you have these container ships. You have these uh, ships carrying uh, your, your 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 oil tankers coming out there. Huge things. The Caribbean cruise lines, right? People sipping their martinis out there. And Joe's idea of training was: if you can sail, you don't have to sail the seven seas. If you can train in front of the Golden Gate. If you can ride the wake, if you can ride the surf of these ships. So, 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 so look at this, right? I'm here on a ship, looking out there. There's this huge freaking container ship coming at me. And I'm mad, and Joe loves to get his mast into the water. He's that kind of a guy. He says, the best way to survive is not to fall off the boat, right? Thank you, thank you, right? <laughs> uh, and, 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 and then, these ships are coming at you, they're blowing the honk, you're going right head on to them. Coming from Angel Island is uh, your Coast Guard. The ship's honking at you, the wake is, you know, 10 foot out there, your ship is riding the freaking surf out there, and you don't want to die, and that's what training grounds are for. I think, I think that's what rendering is out about. Sorry to dwell on this slide, but I think startups are, are a lot about that stuff. It's about riding the wake. It's about surfboarding, container ships, surf, when you know, you're not supposed to do that. When the Coast Guard is on your tail, when, 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 you're, when, 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 when the captain of the container ship and the oil tanker doesn't want you in your line of sight. And after the third round, you know, Han, we said, okay, fine, fine, we'll just take off and, and do your own thing. So anyway, so that, that was training ground for me, and I think that sets the tone for what startups are all about. Anyway, uh, dreams aside, this is where I ended up. Large companies, you know, and the establishment, uh, trying to question authority, uh, Sun Microsystems, Silicon Graphics, and Oracle, those are my past lives. I have a hint there was a lot out here from Sun. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It was the establishment, it wasn't you. Uh, so, uh, my offices at uh, Oracle looked a bit like that. Hey, great guys there, view of San Francisco. You can't really see on this thing. You want to put the lights off. Great people like this. Uh, that's Stuart Bossman uh, from Caltech. Brilliant, brilliant people. The recycled man behind his head. What got me out of the whole establishment, large company thing? I think, uh, thank you, Dan. You're the best. Sorry, my mouth is parched. Get yourself a drink while I... <coughs> so, uh, you know, I come into work one day and my one of my colleagues tells me, you know, Vikram, what this whole large company thing is all about? Do you come, I mean, what are you laughing? No, no, you just, yeah, you can drink. Much better drink for parched mouth. Am I off the kill here? <laughs> is it all right? Dave, is it okay? I'm on YouTube for the record. Say something. Thank you. David Stevens, my patent attorney. All right? Okay, good, good. I'm going to just. Oh, that helps. Thank you. Who is that? Okay, good. All good stuff. So, so, so let's get back into this. So I, I come into work uh, very settling, right? And, and this guy, actually I should disclose his name. There's a lot of names I'm going to throw out here. Yeah. 
Ramana, you're a nanny, great guy, brilliant guy, tells me, you know, Vikram, can you work at a large company? You come in and you push the tank. Every day you come in and push the tank. I had to Google it and get a visual and got this brilliant thing from Yugoslavia. I said, that's what it is. That's how it feels to work in a large company. So if you want to know you're an entrepreneur, you want to get out of the whole mode of pushing the tank. Let's move forward real quick. You will probably want to get a peek, a window into my you know, life before work and stuff. Sorry, the memories are very hazy, probably as hazy as this picture out there. That's me on the right out there playing some guitar and a band called Thunk has got to do with chunks of memory. Someone thought of a great name. I went to school in Bitspilani. I mean, thanks for the intro. You and I know each other for 30 years. It's all a haze. As uh, blotchy, someone didn't even, you know, develop that whole picture too well. All those blotches out there didn't wipe out that chemical too well. Sorry, I just noticed. But um, that's what it feels like. So, so, so what we'll talk about is startups. We'll talk about, um, you know, the last few years, and I think that's what matters. And I, I think that's the inspiration of whatever you're looking for from this talk here. Hey, I love toys. Uh, how many of you are toys? What do you guys do? Motorcycles. <laughs> uh, speed, you know. Um, that's Anika. That's my first motorcycle out there. A track thing. Um, you know what? It's great to have dreams. Um, umbrella girls and motor GP and speed and all the good stuff. The bottom line is you got to work your way towards it. That's my newest bike. Uh, fast. I was just advising Prashant, you know, you're willing to hop onto this, just, you know, don't let go of the handlebars, right? It'll leave you behind. Good stuff out there. It's all about speed. I love guitars. I mean, you do love guitars too, right? Uh, I love to shred. That's my urbanness. So I'm hoping to be able to provide you, uh, you know, a broader view of who I am and what does it take to write code? And, and my, my thoughts on uh, what I believe uh, it takes to do a successful anything. And I think it really comes down to what you derive your inspiration from. That's the bottom line here. My urbanness that out there, my midnight blue, <laughs> you know, I go back a long ways. Uh, so a few times over the hill here, my midnight blue uh, Fender Stratocaster, you guys heard of the Deep purple, the deep purple guitar. So that was it, and that's my ovation guitar out there. I love to mountain bike. Okay, startups. Everything you want to know about a bloody freaking bloody startup. Uh, you can have. Yeah, what's happening? Okay, all right. So um, I did. I have done two startups. Uh, the first one is called Pixlets, and the second one was called Iota Bind. I think it's more, uh, might be more interesting to talk about the failures and the successes. So I think I have a lot more, many slides devoted to the, the, the first one here. And the lessons you learn from that, you'll spend enough time on the Q&A. Are you going to do the Q&A with me? Okay, good. We're not prepared at all, so I think it works well. <laughs> Sorry, you too. Big split. Um, very interesting company. I jump-started this with two co-founders. I was hoping both would be here. Unfortunately, lately not. I plead for to text them and on short notice they couldn't make it. Big Splits was... Uh, okay, I'll tell you what the story here is. A, a brief uh, story here. Incredible technology, as you'll see, prove to yourself and to me. Um, great people, incredible technology, absolutely cool stuff, but uh, complete, complete failure. And, and I think it's important to analyze why and, and understand from it and take the lessons from it and turn them into something really positive here. Yeah. Pixplus was about, um, you guys remember in The Incredibles, the movie, the Pixar movie? I was so inspired by it. Uh, it was about taking 3D scenes, 3D animation videos, uh, uh, you know, the art behind it, the 3D graphics behind it, and the ability to create, you know, I don't want to get into too much technology here, flight path through it, and 
and, and render your imagery into beautiful words. So here's what, what we'll do here, you know? What I'm going to show you is, um, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, so I'm going to actually show you some videos here. I don't have sound here. Take a look at this. I'm going to run through this again really slow. Okay, so 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 let's try and un understand this. Okay, so this is this is Paris Cafe where my family and I we sat and we had you know coffee and cappuccinos and stuff like that back in uh, a party right in Paris, and uh, the whole idea was. If you had 3D imagery, say from a Pixar movie, and you want to create a camera flight path through it, you've seen slide.com, you've seen a lot of photo, video, blogs, you've seen exciting ideas like that. This is the ability to take Pixar quality imagery and render your own content into that. Um, that whole video that you saw was about 10 or 15 seconds. I don't, know, I don't remember how much it is. It takes this is, this is done at a low quality uh, because I wanted to be able to really render it. If you watch it in the movie theaters, it'd be many, many, you know, almost, you know, uh, 100 gigabytes of lead video at HD quality. Um, to render this, this actually, with this video clip, with all the reflection, reflection, and transparency, uh, about four years ago, took a high-end, you know, 16-core machines about three days. That's what you're watching. When you, wa when you look at Industrial Light and Magic, when you look at ILM or you know, Pixar, when you look at all these companies, the, uh, the Disney Studios, you're looking at thousands and thousands of servers actually rendering this kind of stuff. The ability to take their art, blend your own content into it, and render it dynamically, dynamically and, and give it to you as tiny little clips, um, we thought it might be a very cool idea. So we went ahead and created this technology, which would do this uh, about 100 to 1,000 times faster. Uh, I have some really cool people out here from um, PixBlitz. Uh, one of the hardcore rendering people out here is Amit Bakshi. We'll talk about that. He's sitting out there with uh, Corinne and some others from the PixBlitz company. And interestingly, you know, teams matter because um, now when you are with a team, it doesn't matter what you do. You you take your team from one company to the other, no matter what your uh, what your mission is. So, um, so 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 this is this is about. Look at that. That's inspiration from 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 Incredibles. You can put your own videos out there. You can get your you know your favorite camel cigarettes out there. You can get your favorite water bottles out there. Look at the reflection <coughs> in that water bottle. Look at the refraction and the transparency. If you change the video there to your favorite video from YouTube, you could render that three days. Imagine rendering that faster than the time it takes to play that video. That's the technology that we created. Uh, I'll tell you about the team. I'll actually get into some of the key people into that team that created this technology. The VCs, the investors, and other people who really fell in love with it but then we'll talk about the business model again really well. Um, look at that. Um, this is imagery which, that's my daughter on the Cosmopolitan. You could get your daughter or your son or whoever you wanted to. The ability to do that in seconds, the ability to ship your photos into a website that gave you, you know, interesting flight paths through amazing 3D content and produce these beautiful films out there for you within seconds. That's what this technology was all about. Okay. Um, we also, went as far as to say that you could do the same scene with different flight paths didn't matter what your lighting was, whether it was day or night. Look at the beautiful, you know, reflections out there. That's my car out there. So, so, so little stuff like that. So, so we created this technology. 
I quit my job. I didn't want to push the tank. And uh, we said, okay, let's do a startup. We got incredible technology, and let's see, uh, let's see how we got really bloody. Uh, I think it's interesting to understand how we can have cool technology and not really get where you want it to. Uh, you start off with some money. You start off with some office space. <laughs> What's so funny? Amit. Yeah, Amit with his 18 inch biceps is freaking pumping <laughs> rubber balls. You have to be cheap. You need to understand that. Uh, you really, you don't have that much money. So uh, we didn't have chairs, so <laughs> we use Amit's muscle to pump up balls. And that's Corinne out there. Corinne, Corinne's a diamond in the rough. We'll talk more about Corinne later. Uh, Great guys here, that's uh, David Canio and uh, one of my co-founders, that's Corinne out there, which I'm so happy that she's joined us for this for this event here today. Uh, that's what early stage startup uh, setup looks like. So if you think you're any different, you know, that's all right. It's a Costco table thing. You can be cheap, you can pull up company off in 100K. You can pull it off with nothing, pretty much. You can pull it off in your garage. That's the whole point of doing this whole thing. You know, I want to talk a little bit about investors. Uh, this is one of my investors, an angel called Nayupai. I think we'll talk a lot about that in the Q&A. Uh, um, this is in Chinese because we did a lot of business in China. Uh, of course, you know what the outcome is. I gave you in advance the whole hint that uh, we failed. But, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm going forward here. Um, so, um, great guy, uh, we'll talk more about investors and angels and how angels and the people who are a part of the ecosystem, including the people who invest in you, are really your fans. Okay, what does it take to build a team? So, rather than talk about my story, I want to talk about the people I have worked with, the people I have associated myself with. Pujan Kumar, uh, look at the, I mean, this is a pedigree guy, right? He, he came here to this country from, what, IIT Bombay. Pujan was supposed to make it here. He had a board meeting at VMware, some VP or something, whatever. Great guy. Uh, and he decided Yale was not it. Of course, Stanford is where you want to be if you want to do anything with computing. So he goes to Stanford. Uh, let's take a quick peek at his past lives, you know. Um, the guy is um, number three. So, 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 when you want to find your co-founder, <laughs> so Neil is nodding his head. Pujan's a great guy. So, 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 when you want to find your co-founder, what are you looking in? At? You know, we talked about El Capitan. I said, you know, not in fact, you know, freaking want to fall in love. I know what I want. You, when you meet the people you want, when you know who you, who you want, you, you know it right there, it's laser locked there. And I met with Pujan, I knew who he was. I knew this is the guy that I wanted. He, um, forget the pedigree, I actually found out all, all about that later. I actually met this guy down to earth. Um, he, 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 you know, this is, this, is, this is a story he told me when he grew up playing chess. The first 15 years of his life, all he did was he played chess. There'd be 30 kids sitting on the street wherever he grew up back in India, and there was this guru who would come and play 30 kids with a chessboard that didn't exist. It was all virtual. And Pujan could think, think eight moves ahead, <coughs> he could play multiple chessboards. He was probably the most rational man I still know, still is, and uh, an incredible guy. I think, I think you need people who have the amazing amount of compute like this person has when you are challenged in a very hard company and you want to find the answer. You go to people like him and he is going to shred that thing to bits and he's going to come out with an answer and he's going to say, the answer is eight. <laughs> And why is that important? I think, I, think, I think there's very different ways of working with it. People like me, not terribly smart, uh, don't have a rational mind, which is as interesting as people like Pujan. And uh, I have an intuitive mind. Uh, and I think we should
should spend some time talking about intuition versus a very rational mind. You give me a choice of more than four cereal boxes, <coughs> I'm screwed. I can't pick. I don't know what I want. I really don't know. I have to go to Pujan. And Pujan's going to spend a hard time computing it. And someone like me is going to say, and there is eight-ish. And I think that's what you're looking for in your partner. When you want an industrial strength partner, you want someone who compliments you, who thinks very differently. You know, what part of the fraction of your brain is your, 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 your intuitive mind? Maybe less than 1%. Maybe that's what I focused on. But um, the rest of it, the rational mind, you need other people who think through it very logically. Um, so I did promise you that this is about teams. It's about adventure. It's about having fun. So I do want to talk about this. Great guy, David Tenio, who was my co-founder. I can go on and on about it, but let's move forward. Amit Bakshi is actually here. Um, the guy we talked about pumping, you know, rubber balls, 18 inch biceps and stuff like that. Don't mess with Amit. Um, hey, look at that background here. Namco Bandai Games. It was hard. When I pulled him into Pixblitz, my company, he had a flush job. So when you go out there and say, I need a co-founder, how can I find an Amit? Think about it. You've gone through it, right? Maybe not the VCs, maybe not the others, but those of you who are uh, entrepreneurs out here who want to build a team out, you know, how do you do it? I actually don't know the answer, and I think it's a fire within you. It's your passion that needs to carry you over to the others around you. You need to percolate. You need to sort of get that message across to others, to people like Amit. So Amit was. Um, you're at Namco Bandai, I'm at there, happily ever after, I'm sorry. And, and uh, I, had to get you, I had to get you on board, I really had to do that. And, and great, you know, you guys play with the world of Warcraft or any of these games, huge stuff out there. This is a rendering dude, this is hard freaking code, this is, this is stuff. This was the guy, there were others out there, right? Um, and um, instead of being a technical lead at a world of Warcraft, which would have been in line with his career, Amit took huge chances with his career and decided to join me. He, he decided to join Pixblitz. And um, look at his background. The imagery looks a little like this. And uh, we'll talk more about that. People who know what 3D rendering is all about. You know? Great guys. More people, more stories. People who did Street Fighter. That's my team on Pixblitz. Hey, you. Let's talk about a colorful story here, great characters, you know. Steve Upstill, one of my uh, uh, mentors, uh, co-founder of uh, Pixar, great guy, the guy behind, you know, a lot of movies out there. Actually went to New Zealand to, uh, did, he actually did um, The Lord of the Rings, he was the technical director of The Lord of the Rings. Um, great guy out there. You heard of the render man, renderer that Pixar uses for all his rendering. So you're looking at a pretty hi-fi cast of people out there, um, strong team, hardcore programmers, people who know their stuff, know it, you know, know what to do with code, know what to do with technology. We're not talking business here yet, and get into that. People who who've done, you know, Toy Story, Bugs Life. The Lord, Rachel, artistic director of Shrek. <coughs> Isn't that the kind of team you want to be with? You can actually go and look at Shrek, and you can look up the posters when you pay, you know, your 10 bucks at AMC. You see Rachel's name down there. She was on the posters. That was, you know, what her team was. So I want to get into this. So, uh, the bottom does drop out in your life. Uh, my wife, Mina, she's out here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a whole package, what life is. Um, my wife, for reasons beyond this discussion, almost bled to death while I was doing this company. Um, and um, by the way, I'm a certified voluntary firefighter, so um, your accent actually helps. So when you speak on the phone, everyone goes, hey, Vic, you know, you know who you are in Santa Cruz County, that's where I live. And um, I wasn't there that day because I was, I was building a company. I was, at, I was doing pick splits, and she was being airlifted. And my friend Ar Arnie, who was the, you know, Arnold Wernick, 
uh, for the records, who was a firefighter who, who, who knew what, it was a distress call, and even though he didn't know who it was, it was my wife, Minu Gupta, if last name. Uh, he paged in the helicopter out there, and ultimately they were able to save her life, you know. Picked her up from the Santa Cruz Mountains when I was trying to, you know, pick up the pieces from a company which was uh, uh, shredding the bits, taking their furniture off, and uh, here's my wife being airlifted out there to, to Stanford. Um, it's, a, it's a whole package when things like that happen. It's not the first time that's happened in my life, but unfortunately, things do happen out there. Uh, so, uh, I want to move forward with this and tell you that this was technology, or this was, um, techno yeah, this was literally technology seeking an application. This was, I was able to, through